you caught me fixing a mistake. There are a couple of defects in the surface of these slabs. There are knots with large cracks in them. This particular knot, the crack went all the way through. That's not the mistake. The mistake was how I fixed it the first time around. Uh, what I did was, uh, first of all, I masked the underside to make sure the epoxy didn't run all the way through. And then I real carefully masked around the edges of this just to keep any excess epoxy slop from getting out there where I had too much to clean up. Then I mixed up the two-part epoxy and very carefully poured it into the crack. I don't know if it was over exuberance, most likely it was impatience on my part, <clears throat> but I decided to try to fill it all in one pass. I actually overfilled the crack a little bit, thinking that the epoxy would soak into the wood and actually shrink a bit as it cured. And it did. It actually is lower than the surface in a couple of places, mistake number one. But the big mistake was that there are some bubbles in the surface of the epoxy. And where that comes from is that epoxy heats up as it cures. It heats up the surrounding wood around it. That wood, the cells, cells of the wood have gases, air inside the cells. And as the epoxy heats up and heats up the wood, those gases are released and they bubble up through the epoxy. The problem is, if you put it in too thick, as the epoxy starts to thicken, the bubbles can't make it all the way to the surface and pop. So you wind up with a lot of bubbles right near the surface that actually show. I thought they were unsightly. So I'm grinding out just a little bit of the surface of the epoxy. And then where the grinder won't get in there well, I'm using these dental picks and just scratching the surface of it a little bit. That'll get the bubbles out, and it will also scarify the surface so that the next coat of epoxy can adhere better. So hopefully I'll get that fixed up and this one will look right. Let me show you now what I think is probably the more appropriate and correct way to fill these knots. So this is the matching book matched slab uh, that matches the other one and it has a matching feature here which is a large crack that goes all the way through a very large knot. Uh, just like on the other slab, I've taped the underside of that crack to keep the epoxy from running out. And then I've used blue painter's tape and masked loosely around the edges of this crack. The uh, epoxy will still seep under the edges of this tape but it will be less to clean up after the epoxy is cured. And also, in case I have any errant drips out here, it'll protect the slab from that. Now, what I've already done is I've already mixed up epoxy and filled this up about a third of the way. So now I'm going to mix up a little bit more epoxy and fill it up about another third. And after that cures, then I'll do the final third and hopefully not have the bubble problem or the shrinking problem that shrinks the epoxy below the surface of the slab. So let's mix up a little bit more epoxy and see how this goes. Okay, so now I have some uh, two-part epoxy, which I'm mixing up here. You want to make sure you mix this really, really good. This uh, particular epoxy has a slight sort of pinkish cast to it, pinkish brownish cast to it, but uh, it appears to dry pretty clear. Now you can add things to this. You can put a tint in it or you can uh, thicken it up with sawdust, coffee grinds, whatever you, uh, whatever you want to put into it you can uh, use to uh, thicken it up and color it as well. But this I'm just going to use it straight for this because again we're not filling this knot up all the way. We're already about a third of the way full and I'm just going to put in another third. And we're just going to let this self-level. This is real thin viscosity epoxy. 
so it will self level in this crack and we'll just fill it up another third and we'll let that cure overnight and uh, then we'll fill it up the rest of the way. All right, last day of this process, hopefully. Now we're gonna overfill this crack. We filled it up a third of the way the first time. And now, then we put another third in. And now we're gonna fill it up the rest of the way. I'm actually gonna overfill just a little bit because I'll sand this down then and get it flush and that's overfilled probably about an eighth of an inch and I'm hoping now that that's going to be enough and quite get all this crack down here there we go okay so we've got this epoxy don't want it to go to waste and I've got a little cleanup here to do now instead of trying to pour this in what I've got is a couple of old pencils that are too short to use anymore but they were long enough to get into the sharpener and a nice point on that makes it real easy to dab a drop at a time of the epoxy where I need it and I'm just covering up those areas that were low and the areas that had bubbles that I got rid of these pencils work out just perfect for this and the best part is since they were too short to use anyway. When I'm done, I'll just throw it away. No cleanup. Okay, just adjacent to this big knot down here, I've got a knot here that was perfectly fine, but again, something wedged in there and got that. I don't know if it was the saw blade or if it just chipped out when they were slicing these. But what I've done, is I've done a little sanding in the immediate area and stirred up a little bit of sawdust which absolutely will match and I'm just using a little brush here and gathering some of this up and I'm going to dump that right into the epoxy stir that up real good now this epoxy is starting to thicken up a little bit as it's been a few minutes <clears throat> so we're going to need to work a little faster now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to use the pencil tip and I'm going to drizzle this epoxy into this little defect here and this isn't too deep so I don't have to worry about it bubbling or shrinking too much and there we go now I'm going to get this one over here that was by this big knot I used to use the uh, dental picks for putting in epoxy into little tiny places like this but uh, it's hard to get the epoxy off the dental picks and I got tired of buying dental picks and there we go the next thing I want to show you what's called a bark inclusion there's really nothing that needs to be done with a bark inclusion except to make sure that this doesn't eventually someday come out the easiest way to do that is just to get a little bit of your epoxy in and around the edges of the bark inclusion and that will hold it in place and secure it for all the subsequent work on the slab and I got a little bit of a place over here where there's just a little bit of a crack 
and if I can get just a tiny little bit of epoxy in there I'll feel much more comfortable about that there we go excellent all right and then we're going to take care of this little guy here okay my epoxy starting to harden up now so we're getting pretty close to where we're going to have to stop and there we go So after the epoxy cured overnight, I uh, peeled off as much of the blue painter's tape as I could and then I took a belt sander to it just for maybe 10 seconds and that got off the rest of the blue painter's tape and most of the additional epoxy that was slightly above the surface. Then I started sanding, uh, started with a 60 grit pad, I've moved now to an 80 grit pad and this is really starting to look pretty good. A good way to tell how this is going to look after the finish is applied is to use a little mineral spirits and just rub it on there and we'll get a good idea of what it's going to look like. So let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, look at that grain. Look at that grain. And that knot looks pretty good. So this is how to fix knots, bark inclusions, and other uh, defects in a slab. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.